the biggest questions that we have to answer about the longhorn tick is how widespread are they in in um, the U.S. Um, how did how long have they been there? How did they get there? Where did they come from? Um, and are they going to be of significant public health or animal health concern? So in other words, what pathogens will they be able to transmit? Because when it was first um, identified last year, there what, we weren't sure if it would survive the winter, first of all, and we weren't sure um, if it was only in that one location in Hunterdon. There, so we were kind of you know, crossing our fingers and hoping that it wasn't anywhere else and that it, it would be gone come spring. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case, and now we've continued to find detections of it in other counties and now even other states. So the level of concern has been, I think, increasing over time, um, but particularly with regard to the potential impacts it could have on, on agriculture. The most interesting thing about this tick is probably that it can re reproduce uh, parthenogenetically, meaning that females can lay eggs that hatch without needing to mate with a male. That's pretty rare among ticks, so um, it makes it a very interesting species to work with. It would be very unlikely that we would be able to uh, get, get rid of all of them at this point because they, they, they're now, um, we have evidence that they're feeding on wildlife, for example, uh, deer. And once they get into the wildlife, it's kind of like you know opening up Pandora's box and you can't really get them all back in there and close it again.